Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up, how do we feed everyone in a warmer world? Scientists in the Netherlands are searching for crops that can cope with heat waves and drought. We indeed can learn a lot from nature by looking into different environments and see how plants in their natural environment co-op with the stresses they get. First, the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service showing that globally we've just experienced the third warmest June on record with temperatures 0.3 degrees above the 1991 to 2020 average. Here in Europe, June saw an extraordinary heat wave which you can see reflected in this map of surface air temperature anomaly averaged across the month as a whole. There were individual temperature records set in many parts of Europe and here are just a few examples. 32.5 degrees at Banach in northern Norway, almost 20 degrees above their average high for June. 40.6 degrees at Rochefort in western France, again almost 20 degrees above their average high and 40.4 degrees at Knin in Croatia, 12 degrees above their average high for June. Now, last month also saw the drought in northern Italy becoming more severe. And if you just look at this image from June 2020 compared to this one of the same region in 2022, you can see the difference. And then on this graph of soil moisture anomaly, you can see how the soil is drier than average across much of Italy. And actually in a whole band from Portugal all the way across Europe to the Caspian Sea. Now to our report, and we're asking whether it's possible to breed more climate change resistant crops. As the population of our warming planet grows, we're going to need strains of wheat and barley that are better able to cope with heat waves and drought. I met Dutch researchers who are digging into the issue. Barley crops like this one in the eastern part of the Netherlands are at the basis of our food system. Such cereals provide essential calories for people and animals. The problem is that the effects of climate change are already reducing these plants' ability to produce food, as biologist Vilma van Esser explains. We have yield loss uh, due to, for example, extreme heats in India or drought, what we have seen in Europe. And uh, those events will, I, based on what we know now for climate change, occur more often in the future. There's no time to lose because the process of identifying new crop strains able to produce acceptable yields under high levels of stress can take decades. Doing so involves exposing different variants of barley from all around the world to different levels of heat wave and drought in a controlled environment. Plants respond differently depending on their age. So if drought, for example, grows, happens early in development, a plant may develop less side shoot, but if you have it later in development, drought or heat, you might have uh, less seeds in the end. Keeping the yield high also requires healthy roots, and many variants of barley can't grow well in dry soil. So Viola Willemsen is aiming to identify the genetic traits in the most resistant root systems. These variants are collected throughout the world on different attitudes, different climates, different uh, uh, temperatures and what we do then is we look at these uh, root systems under uh, different conditions so with water without water and see how which one is behaving best so are we ever going to find cereals as productive as the ones we have now while also being able to cope with climate change climate proof crops what are they that's a good question because if they are uh, resistant to drought are they resistant to flooding are they resistant to heat? And this is often not the case. So to find a variety that does everything, that is probably not possible. Well, that's all we have time for, but please do head over to euronews.com slash climate now for a replay of our YouTube live debate on how to feed the planet in a warming world. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.